Hey, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to my fourth class. I am doing uh, this topic conformations of alkanes, right? So, how do I explain conformations? First thing, the simplest way to think about conformation is ourselves. We have so many conformations in a day. We sleep, we sit, we walk, we are straight. All these are different conformations for a body. Our leg goes somewhere, our hand goes somewhere. But among all of these conformations, one of them will be uh, stablest. And our body will try to go uh, spend more time in that conformation. And for most of the people, uh, especially for me, definitely sleep is the best conformation. It's most stable and therefore we sleep more than any other posture, any other conformation. Similarly, for any molecule, little bit energy is there in the surrounding. That surrounding it uses to change the conformations. But in that also it will spend maximum time in one conformation than the other. Let us see, uh, let's see example of ethane. So everybody knows ethane. Ethane is carbon, carbon, carbon has four valency. So it has something like this, it has something like this and like this then we have something like this and we have something like this and we have something like this right yeah so this is ethane now if you look here what is happening is there are two carbon atoms on both the carbon atoms there are three hydrogens now this bond this bond can rotate rotate on its own axis without touching anything else. Similarly, this H can also rotate. Imagine it's a ball and it's a stick. You can rotate it, but rotation will not be observable. Similarly, if you rotate this hydrogen, there is no observable difference. But if you rotate this, you can like hold it, hold this hydrogen and rotate it like that, like that. So through this bond, you can rotate it. When you rotate, you will start seeing observable difference. And that difference is called as uh, different conformations. Uh, one way to look at it, no, uh, let me first explain you because it's very important to start understanding how the molecule looks like. This carbon is there, the single, when I draw a simple line, that means that bond is in the plane. It is exactly like how it is looking on the board. So this carbon and this carbon, imagine them to be two spheres, they both are on the board this line is also on the board and this hydrogen there is a smaller ball carbon is bigger atom than hydrogen so imagine a bigger ball and a smaller ball here but this ball is also in the on the plane similarly this hydrogen is also on the plane now what happens to this hydrogen this hydrogen is coming toward the viewer it is coming out of the board i because i cannot draw in the air i am drawing it like this otherwise if it was possible, I would have been very happy to draw in the air. Then I draw this, this hydrogen outside, this hydrogen inside the board. It's not in the plane. It is going inside the board. Angle among them is 109 degrees because both the carbon are saturated. They are sp3 hybridized and therefore the bond angle is 109 degrees, uh, 28 minutes. Similarly, same thing about this. So this hydrogen is towards you, this hydrogen away from you. Now what I can do now? I will hold this whole thing and I pull it towards me. So what is happening is, please understand this part, pay a lot of attention. This index finger, this index finger is on the plane. So it is on the board. So this hydrogen is on the board. Then what is happening? This thumb is towards the viewer, it is coming out. So this hydrogen towards the viewer, it is coming out and this hydrogen is away from the viewer. So it is this uh, dashed line, this hydrogen. Now what I'm doing is I'm catching this and bring it here. So basically I'm rotating like this. So what has happened? This hydrogen which was in the plane, they all have come towards you now. All of them are towards the viewer. But this hydrogen is up and this hydrogen which was towards the viewer, this thumb is coming towards your right side and this hydrogen is going towards your left side. So I can draw it something like this just to make it easy. Nothing more than that. I have pulled it like this. So this hydrogen is coming here 
and this one you are getting H and this one you are getting this hydrogen. Now what has happened is please understand I am not rotating anything. I am not rotating the bond. I have just pulled this one here. So what is happening this whole thing has gone behind. You are still able to see this. So what has happened uh, for you to understand I, I will make them into A, B, C so that you understand what is happening. A, B and C. So you understand I have pulled it here. So this A has come up. B has come on the right side. C has come on the left side. They are all hydrogens. I am just writing for you to understand. Now what has happened here? When you have pulled this here, this whole thing was like this. Right? So what was happening is you were having hydrogen, this thumb in the plane and that index finger, this index finger is towards the weaver. So this hydrogen and this middle finger is away from the weaver. So this hydrogen. So now what is happening whole thing is going back. So this part goes down, this part goes towards the right and this part goes towards the left. It's very very important. Please don't move ahead if you don't understand. Please keep rewinding and keep seeing. So I will just write them as D, E and F. So what is happening is now you see this. This bond was in between these two bonds. This bond is in between these two bonds. So I can put it here. Then what else is happening? Now this has gone. So now this bond is in between these two. So that means these two are here. Now you have turned it like this. So what has happened? This F was away from the weaver. It has gone right side. And this E is towards the left side. So you are having HE and you are having HF. I hope you understand this much. Now you know all are hydrogen so there is no difference. I will just rub this A, B, C, D, E and F so that clarity is there. So that clarity is there. Okay. Now what can happen is little bit energy is there. This bond can rotate. You understand? This bond can rotate. So how many conformations are possible? What I am trying to say is this hydrogen can reach this hydrogen, then it can come here, then it can come here, then it can come here, it can come here, it can come here, okay. So just for uh, understanding sense, I will just make this one as A and I will make this as B so that we have reference between two hydrogens, right. Now how many conformations are possible? Very important question. So you can think, okay, one is like this in between, second can be on it and third can be again here, fourth can be again here. So uh, something like 6 but no the answer is infinite number of, of uh, conformations are possible before this HA reaches HB before this HA reaches HB it is going through all the angles it is going one angle uh, one degrees or 0 0.5 degrees 0 0.1 degrees 0 0.001 degrees 0 0.0000001 degrees so it keeps rotating so all these conformations are possible. Now you understand this. This is the most stable conformation. Okay. I will just tell you one more thing. This is this way of projecting a molecule is called as Newman. Newman projection formula. And, th and this one is called as wedge and dash wedge and dash conformation formation okay we are doing newman projection formula because it is easy to understand but you should be very comfortable to convert between this to this and this to this and you have to practice we'll do definitely one or two more practices for them now if you see this these two hydrogens are 180 degrees to each other you can also call it as anti conformation or rather what I'll say is the angle between this hydrogen and this hydrogen the angle is 60 degrees. Okay. This is called as staggered staggered conformation conformation staggered conformation means the angle between adjacent substituents here they are hydrogens is 60 degrees and you can see 
right now this is the most stable conformer if you move even little bit closer then what happens this hydro this bond angle reduces then when this bond angle reduces these two hydrogens are coming closer to each other so when they are closer to each other they start repelling after all they are electrons uh, which are uh, bonding between this carbon and this hydrogen so this is called a steric hindrance steric means crowded they are becoming crowded it is unstable so you'll say why am i clo going closer i can go a little far i should make more stable good good reasoning so i'm moving it little here i'm making 65 degrees but the problem is this side it is 60 degrees this side also it is 60 degrees if you move it toward this side this angle is becoming larger than 60 but this is becoming lesser than 60 and therefore the steric hindrance starts seen here then what happens little bit energy is there it will rotate when it rotate it goes through unstable conformers you'll ask why should it go undergo unstable conform let it stay in the most stable form i will ask you a question why don't you sleep 24 hours a day you cannot because you are restless because you have energy same thing they have energy they are restless and uh, you know when the reaction happens when it goes through the activation energy most unstable conformers are formed very very high energy they have why does it go through that because unless it goes through that reaction will not happen as when you see when you play cricket you do bowling when you do bowling you're almost standing on one toe on your one thumb toe so that is one of the most unstable conformer you cannot stay more than uh, like some microsecond some milliseconds but you go through that stage because without doing that conformation you cannot ball in a cricket similarly for a reaction to happen it can undergo through the most unstable conformers that will do it later right now it's not required but you understand this i am rotating this i will rotate little 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 till it reaches here then i'll rotate it here till it reaches here in between i will not draw because i cannot keep drawing every degrees i cannot keep drawing every uh, nano degrees every micro degrees so i will rotate it 60 degrees 60 degrees rotation and what i'm getting is what i'm getting is what i'm doing is i'm not rotating rotating the hydrogens which are behind okay which are behind i'm not rotating i'm rotating only what is front so i'm rotating this 60 degrees so this h a goes and sits on hb so hb this h and this h they are not changing their position so you are having hb you are having h you are having h and this h a i'm rotating i'm bringing it on top of this hydrogen so i'll bring it something like this it is exactly on top but if i draw on top then you cannot see so i'm drawing little up so you understand it is coming before hb so other things also i'll draw little front h this also i'll draw little front please you can draw this ho below hb also but then this hydrogen which is coming should also be towards the right and this hydrogen should be towards the right but that's it now what happens is now the angle between ha and hb how much it is zero degrees they are eclipsing each other similarly this hydrogen above each other so between the adjacent hydrogen the angle when it reduces to zero degrees it is called as eclipsed conformation eclipsed conformation okay then again i can draw uh, maybe i should draw one again once again so now i am holding this h a see i am catching this h a and rotating i i took it here now again i'll take it there right so what i'm doing is i'm not moving hb i'm not moving behind the uh, plane behind the board those hydrogens i'm not moving so hb this h and this h they remain behind the board but this one has come here now i'm rotating again i'm getting it middle so i'm catching this h and bring it in middle then what happens when i'm bringing this h in the middle even this hydrogen is moving because like fan it is you understand it's fan uh, uh all three blades are there so it is not possible that one blade will move independent of other if one blade is moving all the three blades are moving so same way initially this ha was here it has moved here now i'm rotating again 60 degrees 
okay i am rotating 60 degrees so again i am rotating here uh, maybe i should rub it off and uh, i'll draw it up <coughs> so i'll draw it here and uh, that will be much better so i'm i'm holding this ha please understand and i'm rotating it 60 degrees when i'm rotating this these three are the fans of the blades sorry uh, blades of the fans and they are connected to this carbon so all of them will move this hydrogen moving here this hydrogen moving here and what you're getting is what you're getting is H see behind part I'm not, i have not touched please remember that part h and this i have rotated here so ha has moved here so ha is here and this hydrogen has moved here so this is the hydrogen and this hydrogen moved here you are getting this hydrogen you can ask me why did not i put h h b h a h a b c d e f for everything i did not put so that no it should not you should not be confused finally you should understand they are all same they are hydrogens but i am putting h a h a b just to bring the clarity so now what has happened i have rotated this now again the angle between them is 60 degrees so on angle between any two closest uh, hydrogens is 60 degrees so it is again staggered staggered conformation conformation you can also call it uh, anti because you can see the opposite hydrogens are 180 degrees to each other this hydrogen this hydrogen is 180 degrees to each other but if the nearest of them is 60 degrees we call them staggered right now we don't use this anti word we'll use this in later examples so basically that is what is happening now you understand this here i will take them the angle as 180 degrees okay and then i am rotating it 60 degrees so when I'm rotating 60 degrees, what is happening is it is going through unstable conformal little by little it is becoming more unstable and becomes most unstable when this HA comes over HB. Then when it starts moving, it is again becoming little more stable because the most unstable was this and when it is moving, it is becoming little, 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 little more unstable till this ha comes up to here now it is 60 degrees more stable again again when it moves it will become little 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 more unstable till it becomes most stable again now I, now i want to draw the energy graph for it so this angle this is called as torsional angle right now it will be very tough for me to compare between ha and hb and uh, keep on going so for time being please uh, excuse me what i'll do is i'll put this angle as uh, this hs hp and hq so i'll keep this as uh, a reference okay so uh, let's draw it is becoming a bit cluttered but uh, excuse me for that okay let's start from here so what is bond angle between hp and hq they are farthest away from each other so the bond angle between them is 180 degrees right you can see the bond angle is 180 degrees 180 degrees and this is energy so you can put as energy uh, kilojoules per mole we need not give value we are just trying to see the stability now this one you see this is the most stable i told this is the best possible way when the hydrogens the neighboring hydrogen are 60 degrees apart from each other any movement will bring two hydrogens closer and that will make it unstable so this is the most stable so i'll put some energy something like this then what has happened this has moved so now what is the angle between hp and hq the angle becomes 120 degrees so let me write here 120 degrees right so now understand what is happening when it was here this hp bond angle between them is very far more stable but when it has come to 120 degrees, this HA and HB are climbing over each other. This is the most unstable conformer. But before it becomes the most unstable, it goes through a lot of other conformers and it becomes unstable, unstable, unstable till it becomes most unstable. So what is happening is slowly energy is rising till it reaches highest. So this was staggered and this was eclipsed. Now what has happened? Your HP has reached here, right? 
Now again I am rotating it here. So HP, this HA is HP and I am seeing with angle this. So this was HQ. Uh, maybe I will just write H B H A and B. I will remove so that uh, clarity is there. So this HP has moved here and your HQ is still behind, right? HQ is behind. Now I have rotated this HP here. So your HP is here. HP is here and your HQ is here. So the bond angle becomes 60, uh, 60 degrees. So I can write here 60 degrees. So I am rotating, I am putting it like this. Okay. And now you understand what has happened. This was the most unstable conformer. But when you are rotating and bring it here, every angle moved is reducing the steric hindrance, reducing the unstability, making it more stable whichever is more stable remember this this is the most important point organic chemistry rather whole chemistry depends on this whichever is more stable has lesser energy whichever is unstable has very high energy right imagine you are standing in a room i am fine i am standing if i heat up this room what happens and if i am barefoot i'll start jumping lot of energy is there that's why i am unstable so very important to, for a thing to be st uh, stable, it should have lesser energy. So that's why I have drawn lesser energy. Most stable means least energy. Then it kept on becoming unstable. It uh, energy kept on increasing till it reached 120 degrees. And now it has reached 60 degrees. This bond angle between them is 60 degrees here, HP and HQ. But now when it comes here again, it is the most stable conformer. So from most unstable, it becomes most stable. So its energy keeps decreasing and that's why it has that's why it has decreased from there to here 60 degrees now what will happen again this hp will come here and sit on this right what happens to the bond angle it will become zero degrees so that's how it keeps increasing so it becomes zero degrees then it will again increase uh, i'll just rub it so that uh, clarity is there so what has happened is now this hp is on hq so the bond angle is zero degrees and the energy is right here now you are rotating it again 60 degrees so the bond angle from here to here becomes 240 degrees and then again you move 60 degrees so 240 plus 60 is how much it is 300 degrees and finally it is finally it is 360 degrees when it again reaches so it basically follows this energy pattern it goes up and again comes down it goes up oh sorry um it comes down so a uh, three um, basically 360 degrees is this hp has started from here and has come back to its original position so that was most unst uh, most stable again so the energy is least that's how it is for but uh, ethane now let's look for butane now we are going to do butane so butane is ch3 four carbons ch2 ch2 and ch3 we are going to take these two as a reference and we are imagining what happens if this bond rotates what are the different conformations possible okay so uh, to understand this we can write it like this this carbon is there then there is ch3 and it has it has one hydrogen it has another hydrogen then there is another carbon on this carbon let ch3 be on the plane and then you are having two C uh, two hydrogens they all have to be tetrahedral so one hydrogen is towards the viewer one hydrogen is away from the viewer i hope you completely understand this structure how does it look like it's a tetrahedral this is in the plane and this cs3 is also on the board so it's like this then what has happened this hydrogen is coming towards you this hydrogen is going away from you similarly this cs3 is in the plane this hydrogen is coming towards you that hydrogen is going away from the viewer on the inside the board so it is something like this okay it is something like this this index finger is your ch3 index finger is your ch3 and this middle finger is uh, is your hydrogen which is away from the viewer 
inside the board okay and this thumb is hydrogen towards you similarly you have this now i can make new newman projection formula why i am making it because it makes my job easy nothing more than that so i will do it like this what i am doing is basically i am holding this you understand i am holding whole of it and pulling it front so what is happening is the fan uh, you are having a, this index finger as ch3 this this hydrogen is your middle finger finger away from the viewer and thumb is hydrogen towards the viewer you are rotating whole thing so whole thing has come towards you now what has happened this index finger which was this index finger which was ch3 when it has come front it is coming up clear na so you are drawing this ch3 here you understand it's not straight line it is like this it is like this now i can't draw outside the in the air so i'm drawing it straight but basically it's like this a tetrahedron and you are having both hydrogens this side and this side you are drawing this what has happened here i have held this part and lifted so this bond is not moving it is just going behind and this whole thing has gone behind you appreciate this point so this part was like this it has come front so this part was there like that has gone behind so what has happened think where this cs3 will go the cs3 was in the plane this index finger it has gone behind so it still remains up so your another cs3 is there uh, let me write it somewhere here and these two hydrogens are again um here and here so you can look uh, you can see very clearly this is a eclipsed conformer last time i drew the most stable conformer in the beginning this time drawing the most unstable conformer in the beginning so that you understand you can start from anywhere does not matter you must know not only here it should look eclipsed to you it should look look eclipsed to you here also what is happening this cs3 is a ball okay this big ball compared to hydrogen very big ball so this is on the board this cs3 on the board so these two cs3s are covering each other if i look from this side i can look only one ball i cannot look the other ball so that is eclipsed conformer similarly what happens this hydrogen is coming towards you this hydrogen is also coming towards you so if i look like this i can see one ball the other ball is eclipsed same thing with these two hydrogens so therefore i have drawn this uh conformer first this is called as totally eclipsed okay i will rub it so that uh, it becomes uh, easier for me it becomes less cluttered now now you can ask me till now i never use this word totally eclipsed i was using the word eclipse so how come totally eclipsed came because we have moved we have moved from ethane to butane now here there are different substituents last time it was all hydrogens now something else can eclipse something else but here what is happening the most bulky groups that is cs3 is eclipsing the another most bulky group that is another cs3 similarly here the least bulky group that is hydrogen is blocking another least bulky group hydrogen so exact the substituents of same size are eclipsing each other this is called as totally eclipsed now what i am doing i need not write ab now because ch3 is there for me to help me out now what i am doing is again this behind ch3 this h and this h i am not touching okay the behind ch3 and h and h i am not touching what i am touching is this ch3 so it's like fan again it's a fan you understand this is not straight line it's like this tetrahedral so this uh, index finger what is it this index finger is ch3 and this right side that is middle finger is your right side hydrogen and uh, wait yeah so th this uh, middle finger is your left hydrogen and this thumb is your right side hydrogen now what i am doing is i am rotating 60 degrees i am rotating 60 degrees so when i am rotating 60 degrees i am holding this cs3 behind part i'm not touching and like that i'm pulling so what happens the behind part remains like that and this front cs3 comes here and hydrogen comes here 
and hydrogen comes here. I hope you are understanding this CS3, the front CS3 I have turned it around. So when I have turned it around, it's like fan blade. So this hydrogen has come here and this hydrogen has come here and you are getting this. So the bond angle is here now, 60 degrees. Here the bond angle between two CS3 were 0 degrees. Now here no referencing problem. I need not write H A, H B, H P, H Q, H A, B, C because I will take all the reference from this CH3. So now what has become? It has become very stable. But still it is not the most stable. The adjacent groups are 60 degrees to each other. So it is called as staggered. It is called as staggered. So staggered is a uh, common name. Within staggered, some more conformations can come. So when the bulky groups are next to each other, they are called as Gauche conformation. Gauche. Okay. Gauche is a more specific term. Gauche also comes within staggered. So staggered is a more generalized name. Okay. Please remember this. Staggered is a more generalized term. But when these two bulky CS3s are next to each other, the angle between them is 60 degrees. It is called as Gauche conformation. G-A-U-C-H-E. Now what is happening? I'm rot I have rotated 60 degrees. Remember you are always rotating 60 degrees. Why? Because I can't rotate 1 degrees, 2 degrees. It will be hundreds of conformers. So we are kind of giving a brief picture of it. Right? So now what I am doing is again I will catch this CS3. I am rotating it another 60 degrees. So what is happening? This CS3 is coming and sitting on this H. This H is coming and sitting on this H. And this H is coming and sitting on this CH3. So what has happened now? I am rotating 60 degrees again. So what I am getting is. See the behind part I have not touched. So again I am drawing it exactly like that. This front part I have brought it here. So this CS3 is coming on top of this hydrogen. And this hydrogen is coming on top of this. And this hydrogen is coming on top of CH3. Right? So now what has happened? Now this H is blocking this H. That's fine. But here a small hydrogen is blocking big CS3. Similarly a big CS3 is blocking small hydrogen. So it is not totally eclipsed. Understand? It will be called as partially eclipsed. So again like partial eclipsed and totally eclipsed are subsets of your eclipsed form. Now what I am doing is I am going to again rotate 60 degrees. I am going to bring this CS3 here. So what is happening? Oh God. Um, can I draw? Okay. I am rotating 60 degrees. So what is happening is you are getting this here. Behind part I am not moving. So behind part remains as it is. This CS3, this front CS3 I have rotated 60 degrees. So this CS3 comes in between. This hydrogen comes in between. This hydrogen comes in between. So what you are getting is CH3 here. You are getting H here. You are getting H here. Now again this is staggered conformation. Why staggered conformation? Because we have given you the principle when two neighboring groups are 60 degrees to each other it is called as staggered but staggered is a big name it's a common generalized name here what is happening is the most bulky groups they are coming opposite to each other this is the most stable conformer because this is the maximum angle these two bulky groups can have now hydrogen doesn't possess that much amount of steric problem compared to what this cs3 possesses so here CS3 is very close, very unstable. Here it is far, stable. Here it is, uh, it is far but uh, CS3 is over H so of course it is unstable. But here what is happening, this is the most stable form, uh, most stable form because this CS3 and this CS3 are opposite to each other and it is called as anti-conformation, A-N-T-I. It is again part of staggered like more specific term of a staggered here is anti. 
now i'm again rotating 60 degrees i'm again rotating 60 degrees so what i'm doing is i'm pulling this cs3 on top of this hydrogen so i'm pulling this cs3 on top of this hydrogen so what happens the behind part remains same ch3 h h and now this cs3 is coming on top of it ch3 and what is happening this hydrogen is going on top of this cs3 and this hydrogen is going on top of this cs3 so now tell me what is this conformer so here hydrogen is covering cs3 here cs3 is covering hydrogen covering hydrogen so it is called as partially eclipsed partially eclipsed okay then again I rotate 60 degrees I'm catching this CS3 and pulling it here so we are getting again that behind part remains same CH3 H H and this CS3 has come here so you are having CS3 here and you are having hydrogen here hydrogen here so what is this called as again this is called as Gauche conformation why is it called Gauche conformation because the two bulky CS3s are 60 degrees to each other next to each other is called as Gauche G A U C H E again I am telling you Gauche is subset of staggered it's still you can call it staggered but staggered is a more generalized term so you can write it staggered and then again you rotate 60 degrees so I am getting to the starting point which is here so I'm rotating again 60 degrees. So what I'm getting is CH3 H H I'm getting the CS3 on top. I'm getting this hydrogen on top. I'm getting hydrogen on top. So this is again comes totally eclipsed. Okay. So now tell me stability. If I write it as, let me write the terms, okay? A, B, C, and D, E, F, and G. Let's write first the most stable and the least stable. So which one is most stable? Of course, most stable will be anti-conformer, where the two most bulky CS3 groups, they are opposite to each other. So, D, very clearly D is your most stable form. I cannot see any other eclipse, so let's stick with D. So, most stable is D. Right? Do you see anywhere any other anti? I cannot see, so I don't think it exists. Now, let's go to... Uh, most unstable okay so most unstable yeah fit least stable so which one is most unstable of course totally eclipsed because now two bulky cs3 groups are against in front of each other bond angle is zero degrees so they fight a lot of uh, stereotypes lot of uh, hindrances there so they don't like bulky groups the so two strong people they don't uh, they are not very stable in the same group you know they fight so same thing is happening these two big cs3s are there they are unstable so the most unstable will be totally eclipsed so how many totally eclipsed we have a is there and then of course g is there so a and g a and g now what am i left with is what i'm left with is gauche and partially eclipsed nothing more than that so this was gauche okay sorry this was partially eclipsed partially eclipsed now tell me between partially eclipsed and gauche which one you think is more stable gauche is stabler because in partially eclipsed two groups are on top of each other though they may not be same but still they are on top of each other so gauche is any day more stable than partially eclipsed so if i put the energy wise what I'll put first I'll put the most stable form so D is most stable form so it has least energy 
then which has little higher energy than most stable form that will be gauche because after totally clear uh, sorry after uh, anti conformers the most stable forms are gauche so which are gauche b and b and uh, b and f so b and f they both are same uh, they have same stability and then comes your partially eclipsed so which are partially eclipsed partially eclipsed are your c and your e so your c and your e and then the most unstable are the totally eclipsed that is your that is your a and g that is your a and g so if you remember the first structure how was the first structure first structure if you remember well both the cs3s were on top of each other so that is what it is the most unstable form because it is totally eclipsed that was your a most unstable form so a was like this i do like that and then what happened you moved cs3 60 degrees so when you move cs3 60 degrees what had happened cs is coming in between so that was your gauche conformer what we said gauche is second most unstable uh, second most stable so uh, right so b and f this was your gauche so from a it became b that was the second most stable so let us draw the second most stable something like here we'll make it so that was your 60 degrees let us make it here okay so uh, behind part we are not rotating and then i'm rotating this front part cs3 h and h so the bond angle between these two cs3s are 60 degrees called as gauche gauche is more stable than your partial eclipse and of course then more than totally eclipsed so it is most much more stable than totally eclipsed it has come down here then what has happened this cs3 is moving another 60 degrees so it is going partially eclipsed what did i say partially eclipsed is more unstable than gauche so the next structure that is c this was a okay this was a and this was b this was b um maybe i'll draw it here so uh, this was b and now i'm getting partial eclipse so partial eclipse is less stable than your gauche so i will put it little higher energy um here i'll put so that is your c so c was partial eclipse let me draw partial eclipsed once again so you are having c h3 h and h and then what has happened this has rotated so this cs3 is coming on top of this h so you are getting this cs3 here and you are getting this h here and this you're getting um, h here again so this is your c this partial eclipse now what is happening you are again rotating it 60 degrees now what is happening this bulky cs3 is coming opposite to the cs3 so more stable this is called as anti conformer so anti will be more stable than even your gauche so you have to bring it down more something like this okay so you are getting it least energy this is energy is going up i told you whichever is more stable we have lesser energy now anti has more stable so it has least energy so i come down most and then let me draw it for you again here so let us draw it here what has happened is i have pulled this cs3 60 degrees so this cs3 is here this h has gone here then h is gone here so this is your anti conformer so this was your d okay this was your d so this was d was the most stable conformer and then you are again rotating 60 degrees now what we are doing we are rotating this cs3 on this top of h so that we are getting eclipse conformer now what do we know eclipse conformer is this one c so it will have same energy as c so it is having higher energy than both anti go and gauche conformer so we put it here and you get your e here e you get partially so what what's happening once again this cs is coming on top of this hydrogen 
so behind uh, the behind part i am not rotating behind part is still ch3 h and h and this ch3 is come on top of it ch3 is come on top of it and this hydrogen has gone on top of this uh, ch3 and this hydrogen has come gone on top of this hydrogen so this is your partially eclipsed now what happens now again you are holding this ch3 this front ch3 and rotating 90 degrees it's come in between so that is again gauche conformer so gauche you know is here so we are drawing it here this is your gauche conformer so that's your f and then uh, should i draw let me draw it so you are having your gauche conformer like this ch3 you are having h and h and this ch3 is gone in between so you are having ch3 here and you are having H here and H here and then finally you will go back to the original structure I am putting this CS3 on top of this CS3 and so what I am getting is most unstable conformer that's the that's your G so G is your CS3 on top of your CH3 so you are having this CH3 you are having sorry um, you are having this h and you are having this h so you are going back to starting so this your angle has moved from 0 degrees to 60 120 180 240 300 and 360 degrees so you can see this is a very very symmetrical graph starts like that most unstable conformer that is totally eclipsed comes down that is your Gauche then goes up partial eclipse then completely down that's your uh, anti conformer and then goes up down then again goes up so that's all for today thank you very much